Okay, in this video, I'll show you guys three ways on how to get a formula for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n. And these are just my first three ways. I will have more for you guys later on. And maybe you guys can also comment down below and let us know what are the other ways that you have. Anyway, perhaps this is the most natural way to do it. Um, when we are trying to do these kind of things, why don't we try to add the first few terms and look for the pattern of the result? That's pretty much the idea. And this right here starts at 1, but we can also say 0 plus. We can also start at 0, right? Because 0 plus 1 and all that is the same thing. So here is the first way. What we'll do is we'll use s 0 denoted for the zero's partial sum, meaning you look at whatever this is, which we know it's 0 right here, right? And then s1, this is the partial sum when you add this and that when n is equal to 1, and this is when n is equal to 0. Add them up, you get 1. And this right here is just going to be a sequence, and our goal is to find a formula for the sequence, right? The partial sum is a sequence. Anyway, next one, we'll denote this by s2, so that means we add this up, which is going to be 3, and then s3, we add these up, right? And of course, you can work that out, you will get 6. And Sometimes you may need to do more, right? You actually don't know how many to do. Uh, just do a few of them. Let's do one more. S4. And you will see that, okay, you add this up, it's going to be 10. And so on, right? Well, how many is enough? Here's the following. You just do a few of them, and now you ask yourself, how can you go from 0 to 1? Well, naively, we can just say this is plus 1. And then from here to here, naturally, you can say it's plus 2, of course, right? So that's pretty much the idea. Plus 3, and then plus 4, and so on. And you see that this right here, they are not the same number, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, they are not the same number. So in that case, maybe you can do more, because based on 1, 2, 3, 4, what's next? You add 5 right here to get the next number, right? We're trying to get a formula for this so we can see what the next term is. Now, from 1 to 2, we add 1. From 2 to 3, we add 1. From 3 to 4, we add 1. This is so nice, isn't it? And here's the deal. Whenever you see the difference right here being the same, we can stop. And in fact, you didn't need to have this term right here, but you know, just do one more just for insurance purpose. You know. When you see these numbers, the common difference of the common difference, I don't know how many times you have to do it, but if you do see this being the same, you can stop. So what does this mean? This is the first level difference. If the first level difference is the same, that means you have a common difference, that means you have a linear sequence. Okay, That's like the first degree equation. Now we have the second level of the common difference being the same. That means we have the second degree equation for the a sequence. So it's a quadratic sequence. So based on this, we know that I will use as n to denote the n's partial sum for this, and that's the formula. This it's going to be the standard form of a quadratic equation in terms of n. So we'll just write down a n squared plus b n plus c, right? n squared, n and no n, of course. Our goal is to figure out what are the values for a, b, and c. If we can do that, we're done. Now, here's the deal. We know that s, 0, this is why we love 0, right? We love 0 so much sometimes. s, 0, it's equal to 0, and this will tell us when n is equal to 0, we should end up with 0. So I will just plug in 0 into all the n's, and you know it's going to be super nice because it's just super nice. You get c is equal to 0 right away. How nice can... How much nicer can this be, right? Anyway, next one, s1. This means n is equal to 1, and you end up with 1, okay? This is the result of the uh, partial sum. And you just do the work, a times 1 to the zeros, 1 to the second power plus b times 1, and then plus c is 0 already, so you can write that down, or maybe not, up to you. Anyway, from here you get 
a plus b is equal to 1, right? So you get a plus b is equal to 1. That's just as nice. Now, as 2, so let's do this real quick. We get strip for the result. This means a times 2 squared plus b times just a 2, and then c is 0 already. Now, let's see what do we have. This is 4 times a, so we have 4a plus 2b, and this is equal to 3. And of course, this is now a system equation, so you can do whatever you would like to do to solve this, right? So maybe I can get a by itself first, so we can multiply this by negative 2, so I will do that. So if I do that, I'll just show you guys all the work, a plus b, and then you multiply this by negative 2. Um, throughout the first equation, this is equal to 1, so I'll multiply this by the first equation, so then you will get negative 2a plus, negative 2a minus 2b is equal to negative 2, and then you get 4a plus 2b equals to 3, right? That's the second equation we haven't used yet. Anyway, cross this out, this is 2a equal to 1, that means a has to be 1 half. Well, if a is 1 half, 1 half plus 4 will be 1. Well, b has to be 1 half as well, right? Because 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So we got it. This tells us a is 1 half, so you can just put that down. And then times n squared plus 1 half times n, and then plus c, which is 0. This right here is a formula. So that's the first way. This is perhaps the most algebraic way in the sense that you'll see this in the algebra class first. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, <coughs> sorry. Second way, we are still going to be using the nth partial sum, but this time we'll do it slightly differently. This is going to be so much quicker, all right? So we'll still be using this, and I'm not going to write this down again. That would, it's exactly the same setup. Now, this is what we will do, right? Okay, you do this, you do that, and then you see we have all ones. These numbers are the same on the second level. Now, here's the deal. You are going to utilize these numbers right here, okay? This number right here. It just depends on what these numbers are. When you see this number, okay, this is the zeroth term, right, technically. What you do is you do zero, which is from there. You multiply it by n choose zero. And this is the binomial uh, the coefficients of those things, right? I'll write this down later on for you guys. And then you add it with the next number, which is one. And that's the second level. So what you do is you multiply by n choose one, because that's the first level. This was the zeroth level, technically, the original. And then you can imagine the next one, I will put down this one right here, and we times by n choose 2. Why n choose 2? Well, this is the second level, right? This is pretty much the work, right? Anyway, let me tell you guys what this is. n choose 0 by definition is equal to 1. n choose 1 is just n. n choose 2. This is how I like to do it. You start with this right here, which is n, and you go down by 1 and which is just n minus 1. These two terms are enough when you multiply. Why? Because we have 2. That means we should have two terms. But you do have to divide it by 2 factorial, meaning 2 times 1, like that. Right? So this is pretty much the word. And now we can just do the math. 0 times this is just 0, doesn't matter. 1 times n is just n, so we have the n right here. And then 1 times this is just that, so this is just, we can do whatever you want to do, seriously. We can distribute this in here, right? And this is 2 in the denominator. So n times n is n squared over 2, and then minus n times 1, right, which is n over 2, like this. And in the end, you see, pass the n minus n over 2, which is like 1 minus 1 half, which is positive 1 half. In the end, you get n squared over 2, which is the same as that, and then this and that combine it to plus n over 2. So this right here is also a formula for that. Really nice, isn't it? So now, here is the third way to do this. 
And perhaps this is the most famous way and the quickest way and the way that maybe uh, you can impress any girls that you want anyway. So now, we'll be looking at 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to n. Let me just write it down. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 plus n minus 1. This is the previous term before you end. And then plus n. This is where you end, right? We want to get a formula for this, so I will just say this right here is S, right? You can put on Sn if you would like. Maybe I will. Why not? So, this is what we want to get. Now, here is the deal. I'm going to rewrite this backwards. I'm going to say if I want to find Sn, it's the same as starting from n and then go down by 1. I add n minus 1 next, which is this right here. I just reverse the order. Next, I can do it again, which is going to be you go down by 1, n minus 2, and so on, so on, so on. And then in the end, you end up with plus 2, plus 1, right? So that's the idea. And the beauty of doing so is if you add these two equations together, you see that on the left hand side, 1sn plus 1sn is of course 2sn. And now, here is the nice part. 1 plus n, this is just n plus 1, if you would like, just write it down like this. 2 plus n minus 1, 2 plus negative 1 is plus 1, so this right here is still n plus 1. So we just plus n plus 1. This plus that, it's also n plus 1. So we can put this down, and so on, so on, so on. This right here, n minus 1 plus 2 is still n minus 1. Lastly, n plus 1, of course, is n plus 1. Now, how many of these parentheses do we have? And the answer to that is n of them. Why? Because we have n terms right here, right? So, I will just tell you guys that this right here, we have n of the n plus 1. So, of course, when you add them up, you can just multiply them. Namely, you get 2 Sn equals to n times n plus 1. And now we can, of course, divide both sides by 2. So you get Sn, which is going to be this over 2. n times n plus 1 all over 2. And this is actually the usual form of the formula that people present, but let me just match this and that, even though they don't look the same, but whatever. Anyway, uh, n squared over 2. This times that over 2. So, yeah. But let me box this just to show respect for this method. Um, Gauss figured this out. So it was not me. And this right here, as I said, is more natural. And you can always do that, right, to figure out pattern by using system of equations. This right here is slightly more strange, but it's really cool. And Vermontica actually proved why this is true. You guys can check out his video. And this is uh, you know, algebraic proof, right? So it's a lot of abstract algebra that kind of thing. You can check that out. But you can imagine if you have another row and if these numbers are different, the pattern actually you know, works out to be the same, right? But anyway, hopefully you guys like this video. And as I said, these are the first few ways I want to show you. You guys can check out my next video. I will show you guys more ways. At the moment, this is it, right?